Hi, it's Jen and Tammy back with our final Wooly Mug Rug project for January. Wow. Now I think a lot of people are like, why would you end with January when January is the start of the year? The start of the year? We did start in January. However, we did the February project first so you could make it in January and display it in February. Thank you. Because I go. knew some people were like, that's crazy. That's why, do you, why do you end a series in, it's kind with of a odd January? With a January. But this is actually yes. released in December so you can make it and display it for January. Yes. That's and we why. really do that with all of our seasonal we programs, do. like the adornment series, the blooming series, mm -hmm. table glitz, which is behind us for January. Yep. This is beautiful with all of the metallic uh, um, kind of details in the mm -hmm. fabric. It's beautiful. And of course, your sure. thread set was a metallic gold. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And that's a whole nother series. If you haven't already subscribed, I have to say you've been missing out. So <laughs> don't miss out anymore. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that way when Tammy and I have a new idea or Casey or other people yeah. on the design team have ideas, we can share those with you and you're the first ones to know about them. That's now right. for the Wooly Mug Rug, this is this is so cute. This is I, really oh cute. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Look at the little, they're literally little uh, movable. They're dimensional stitches. Yes. On that, here. So I'm excited they're to so jump cool. ahead. But oh, yeah. before I do that, I should say if you have not already um, downloaded this, go to the Shabby Fabrics homepage. Yep. Go on the very bottom navigation. There's a link mm -hmm. that says free downloads. Click that. You'll be looking for the Wooly Mug Rug for January and you'll see all 12 of the series there mm -hmm. as well as the Table Glitz that's behind us. We did yep. 12 for that. Yep. There's so many other videos there from receiving blankets and toddler bibs to, to quilts and everything in between. Oh, There's yeah. so much fun there. If you're viewing on YouTube in the description box below, you can click that and download your two pages for the Wooly Mug Rug Snowman. One of the pages is for your layout diagram. I'm going to put that aside. We will be using that because of yes. course when you get your pieces cut out, I really use that as my guide of oh, absolutely. where to place that. Depending on mm -hmm. the complexity, I will often use an applique pressing sheet mm -hmm. to assist in the process of laying everything out just right. But you'll start with your um, Wooly Mug Rug diagram, which shows all of your different shapes. They are reviews for reverse for fusible applique. I have my wafer daylight one light box. Number There's three one. sizes. Yep. We kind of grab the size that fits the project. I love this one I for this project. That little project. It's perfect. It is. It fits. It's nice. It doesn't take up too much of my no. workspace. It's great. I love that size. Um, I don't use your friction pen. Uh, I'm going to be using a micron pen. As you know, the friction pen will go away with heat. So when you start ironing your shapes to the back of your wool, your don't lines use disappear. A friction pen. So I've got a micron <laughs> pen here today. My heat and bond light, the bumpy side goes down, the yep. side goes up, and I just began to trace around my shapes and continue uh, tracing around your shapes, roughly cut around those. You can be using your chi scissors for that, and then ironing them to whatever you feel is the back side of mm -hmm. your wool. And we haven't mentioned this in the last couple of videos, these wool. I, I love the chi scissors. Oh, they're amazing. Um, there are larger scissors. I just I feel like I have like more control. Yeah, the smaller because pair they're scissors. shorter. Yes. 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 So I, I, absolutely. when I'm doing wool, I absolutely grab, I grab for these all the time. I grab but for the guys with, first. Especially with the wool. Yep. Um, now I want to say for the background, you're going to be appliquing to one piece of black, doing all of your stitching on yep. the back like this. And we want to course cover that up. And that's why you have a second piece of the black circle to be able to iron that to the back. So once you trace your circle out, you'll be doing one on the fusible webbing, mm -hmm. one on the freezer paper. We love our cut right heavy duty freezer paper. It's just so that's, that's our fusible. Yeah, that's my fusible one. And this is just, it, it, and you know what I'm amazed? We've used this piece mm -hmm. in Several so times. many videos. I know it. And it just it keeps. It still sticks. You don't have to do, of course with the fusible, it's, it's a one time shot. Right. But with the freezer paper, you can just use it over and over. I can barely get this thing off here. It has so much grab, and I think I've used this in at least three or four videos. And it just, it wears like iron, it's it thick does. as can be. Yep. It doesn't get distorted. It's fantastic. This is what you'll be applying your shapes onto. Yes. And as I mentioned before, that's why I love to actually bring out my layout diagram. You might want to be using an applique pressing sheet. 
Um, and I kind of have this here, and you might put your shape over, and just kind of is that about where it goes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just having it nearby is fantastic. I think we do such a nice job of numbering it so you know which piece goes down first. Underneath. Yeah. That's correct. So once That's you have correct. all of your shapes down to the background, I see you used a friction pen, I believe, to draw on your I eyes did. and your mouth. I used a little bit. Yep. And I just, I am so excited to jump into these stitches. And see the stitches? But I'm going to head it over to you as quickly Wonderful. as possible. Wonderful. Okay. And I know this is the thread set. It's absolutely Excellent. gorgeous. The black is sold separately. That's going to be your blanket stitch around the to edge. To go around. That's right. But let's see these amazing threads, Tammy. They're beautiful. Yes. So let's look at all of that. Okay. Talk us through your magic. What did you okay. do? So, of course, the white, the orange, this purple is for his scarf. This burgundy color mixed perfectly with the wool that we use because there is a burgundy line running through. You cannot see my stitches on this, can you? Nope. No. And that's, and that's because that particular wool right in through. our kit does have this burgundy in it. It does. It has the burgundy in it. And it is it's incredible. Just perfect. I want the whole overhead wool. camera to really kind of zero in on this. I could did not even, well, I, I'll be straight up. I was like, why is this, why is, that in why is this in here? She's what did like, you use that she's for? She's like, it makes so perfectly what with his arms. It just disappeared. So it once does. again, you're the expert. It worked. I'm I the promise student it worked. here. <laughs> it worked. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we are going to start. Let's do the woven circle first. I love this stitch. This, I've been looking for a way to use a drizzle stitch and a whipped woven circle. Is that what this is? Yes, that's okay. for his button. Ah. We tried to do just a French knot here, and it was just too small. Buttons on a snowman, I think, need to be a little bit bigger. True. And it was just too tiny and too little, and no matter how many wraps I did on a French knot, it was still just too little. So I went to my book, and I that's started looking for a stitch, yes. and I found one. All right, so I'm on page 117 of the Creative Stitching Book. This is by Sue Spargo. This is a full color book. If you don't already have this book, I highly recommend you add this to your stitching library. This is oh invaluable. Gosh. I know you're going to need yes, this. this. We're going to use a little thread magic. magic. I want to tame this thread. This is that dazzle thread, and it does get a little squirrely. Okay. So what I did was I just took a friction pin and I just marked where his buttons go. All right. So to start this stitch is I want to do five spokes on my wheel. You always want to do an odd number of spokes. Oh, you came up in a place I didn't expect. You didn't think I'd come up outside no. of that circle. I'm no. going to go to the circle. The circle's my center. Oh, so you're kind of on the upper left of that. Into my circle like this. Oh. And I'm going to put five spokes on this wheel. I'm just going to quickly do just a, just a little back stitch here. Just a quick little stitch. And we're going to do five of them. Just around your... Just around, yep. And I'm just bouncing around. And I'm coming up in the middle. I'm coming up, or I'm going down in the same place. Every, every time. time. Every time, because I want them all to meet in the middle. But I have to have five of them in there. You always want an odd number. There's four. And then we get to do the fun part. The whole thing's been fun. Yeah, the whole thing this is, is fun. This is the That's extra true. fun part. Right, the extra fun part. Okay. Okay. So I get all five of my spokes on my wheel. I'm going to come up in the center, just like this, right up through there. I'm going to use the back of my needle. Really? Because if I use the front of my needle, it's sharp and it's going to poke my thread and grab my wool. Understood. You use the back so of it your needle. So it kind of glides. That's right. So I'm going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. Gosh, that's Super amazing. Quick. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go over, under, and I'm just going to pull it through. The next one, I'm going to go over this one and right. under this one, right? Right. And I'm just going to keep working this. Oh my gosh, how Over fun is under, that? Over under, just in a circle, all the way around. And you don't go around very many times because your little guy is, I mean, it's just a little button. You could keep, you could actually oh, yeah. grow this, couldn't you? You could. You could grow this. This is going to be as big as your spokes. Your oh, button, your overall dimension of right. your button. 
right? It's going to be as big as your spokes. Bigger so shape, it, go out further. Go out further. That's right. I just wanted to keep it little, so I just did my spokes at a quarter of an inch. Okay. Look how cute this oh is. Oh my goodness. Isn't that cute? And, and you know, it's a wooly bug this. rug, so if you truly That's do right. use it, you wouldn't want a button here. No. Because it's going to be raised. No, it would be raised, right, and it would tip your cup. Look how cute that is. Oh my gosh. Just That's a perfect adorable. Little button on there for him. I gosh. love that. Okay. So that's the first fun stitch. Now the second fun stitch. This is called a drizzle stitch. And we're gonna have to move these little threads because okay. I need you, you need, need some fighting room. You need something to poke into. Okay? Oh my gosh, really? So I'm going to This is amazing. First this is of this all, is here. Yeah. The drizzle stitch on the end. Yep. Okay. Okay, so it's a dimensional stitch. All right. All right. This is on page 100 in this book. And if you've done any kind, whoop, if you've done any kind of um, casting on, like with knitting, it's a cast on stitch. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I'm gonna come up on the edge of his scarf, just like this, so I have a knot in my thread. I'm gonna knot it. I'm gonna come up, just like this. Put him on here. I'm gonna put my needle back down in here and I'm poking it in there. I'm going to unthread my needle. What? Yeah. For real? For real. This is cool. All right. I'm going to use my finger to cast on stitches. Okay. So I'm going to turn my finger like this and lay the thread and I'm going to twist it around. What? And I'm going to count. Oh my One, gosh. Two. That's amazing. I know, it's so cool. So your finger's under and I'm twisting my finger. Three. Oh my gosh. Four. I'm gonna go seven times. Five. Oh. Six. So it's just like knitting. If you knit, you know how to do cast on stitches. Oh my you see how they gosh. start to twist? These stitches are starting to twist around my needle. Yeah, what do you I'm do? I'm okay with, with that. You're okay. Oh heck yeah, that's cute. That looks cute. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Okay, now we have to re-thread our needle. Aha, I'm going to use my embroidery needle threader. Oh, this is from Clover. From Clover. This is such an awesome tool. I love this thing. Boom. But see how frayed this is getting already? Yeah. And so it gets really hard here to redo. Do you want to do any more of that or are you good to go? Oh, hold on a second here. Okay, you ready? Re-thread ah. your needle. Ta-da! No, okay. would you use would you I use did the thread use magic it the more than once? I did. You can use you it can. more than once. I guess oh, you yeah. kind of use it as you needed. You start having problems with your thread, use more of that. Okay. Absolutely. Gotcha. Okay, now I'm going to have to pick all this up. My needle is still in my wool, and I'm going to take my thumb, and I'm going to hang on to all these stitches, and I'm just kind of compressing them and mashing them down on my needle, and I'm going to put my needle straight through. That is the coolest thing ever. Oh my There it is goodness. right there. It is a drizzle stitch. Look how cute this is. Oh my Can you gosh. see how it's twisted? Yes. It's like spins in a circle. That's amazing. I think amazing. that's so cute. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Isn't that fun? So then the next stitch you just take your needle up right into the middle and you would do it again. But I love this pressing mat because yeah. it gives it's me... It's like a, you can anchor into yeah, it. Yeah. I need an anchor. And you just anchor it down, unthread your needle, and do your cast on stitches. Wow. And we're just do seven. I'll and do I know, more. just so you guys know, getting a little sneak peek, we have a larger 14 by 14 inch pressing oh, yeah. mat coming your way. It's from Shabby Fabrics. We're it's super beautiful. excited. We are super because excited. Because we know, like when we're piecing blocks, oh, yeah. it's not practical for me to use this size. No, it's too little. And mm -hmm. I often do a 12 inch block, so that's a 14 right. inch a 14 is so perfect. perfect. So that's going to be just awesome to use that. You know what you could add right here? What? Let's say you wanted to add a bead onto the end oh of this right here. Oh my gosh. You slide a bead on right here before you rethread your needle. Put a bead on right here, then you're going to rethread your needle. You don't have to do that. Oh, Remember, yeah, I got right. a thing. I've got this. What the <laughs> heck am I doing? You're going to re-thread your needle, just like this. 
That would be really interesting. And now your bead would be locked on there with your thread, and so then your thread is going to pull through. Oh. How cool is that, right? I, know. I think that just came to you in this moment. I was thinking about that. Oh, I know. I'm thinking I could have put beads on the end of this, and I didn't. There we go. Maybe the next There's another the one. The next woolly mug rug Isn't series. Isn't this fun? <laughs> there you go. Isn't that cool? That is fantastic. So the more stitches you do, the longer your drizzle yeah. stitch gets. So right. You can just so keep if going. you want them longer, you could just add more stitches. Wow. Okay. That is amazing. Isn't that awesome? Yes. All right. So to finish, I would just finish my little drizzle stitches. I did French knots for his eyes and a little back stitch for his no for his mouth with my black. And I just took my black and did a blanket stitch around him to finish it off. And now for this. Oh, we did a chain stitch. That's and right. And I know they've seen you do it so many times. They have. But can I we see it stitch. one more time? Yes. <laughs> it's so cool to watch it happen. And I would you just kind of just eyeball it kind of that's what I that. did I drew that with a friction pen and I just eyeballed that boy this thing's really getting frayed out hey I've it? got it I've got the answer oh, oh you got, got another got answer clover <laughs> embroidery needle threader okay. that works really well so I would just yeah I would just definitely just eyeball this and I just wanted to put a little thing on his vest here on his coat just like that. Let's see if I can pick up my needle. You're going to come up at the very top of his scarf and start your stitch right down. Although my tail is as big as my thread. <laughs> that, didn't, that never works. And you've got other thread happening. Well for me. You've got a lot going on here. Going on. I know. <laughs> and do a wrap. Nice. And do your stitch. So to get it to chain together, you're going to go inside yep. your chain stitch so, so they all match together and just follow your friction line that you drew on there. Wow. Just like that. I know that's your oh, favorite yeah. stitch. It is. It's we quick. hope you've enjoyed that, oh. the series. And I, and I should, we I have. jumped ahead. I know once you're all done with the stitches, that's when we use the we piece. We use that on. Yep. That's we, right. We and that just kind of, that. Really, when I use fusible on the back of there, it takes all my knots. It makes sure those yeah. knots are going to stay there. It secures everything. That's true. I really like using the fusible on the back. It just, man, it makes it stay right there. It does. And I know my stitches are not going to come out. Right. That's important to me. And we know that yeah. when we press down on the wool pressing mats, oh, yeah. upside down. It just seems yep. like it doesn't smash down the stitches. It doesn't. See, they're still all there. Exactly. All it kind of goes into the Yeah. And but we've it's had like that. Tammy, thank we've you. Had so much fun. You've been in the hot You're seat welcome. the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> I've been like, yay, yeah. Tammy. <laughs> you have. And you have taught us so many we've things. Had fun. Uh, Sue Spargo, thank you for making this incredible Absolutely. book that we've been able to reference all throughout our program. Absolutely. Um, and just, it's been a wonderful series. I know you're already thinking about the next oh, series. Absolutely. So yep. if you've enjoyed this series, we'd love to get some feedback from you. If there's other things you'd love to see us do, we want to yep. hear from you. We want to give you the things you want to see. You bet. And we are excited to bring you the next series, yep. whatever that could be or will be. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.